I'm Caroline Dowd Higgins. Thanks for listening to Your Working Life Today, my podcast series featuring thought leaders in the career and personal growth arena. Now, I know that you spend a significant portion of your life at work, so I'm on a mission to provide you with tools, inspiration, and resources so you can enjoy your career and love your life. And I'm very excited to welcome my special guest to the show today, Peter Diamond. Peter, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Hey, I want to tell my audience a little bit about you. You are known as the Amplify Guy, and you are the author of Amplify Your Career and Life, Four Steps to Evaluate, Assess, and Move Forward. And Peter, I just devoured this book on a recent airline trip, and it was extraordinary. So I want to thank you so much for that. But I want to share with our audience that you're a professionally trained and certified coach. And you work with hundreds of senior level executives and others to help guide them through change, ranging from navigating a career shift to getting better work life fulfillment. So I know that you are going to resonate with this audience. Peter, let's start from the beginning. What prompted you to write this book? So yeah, so the book came, uh, Initially, from uh, I was having a really difficult year back in 2009, and so the uh, initial impetus for the book was me just uh, figuring out and dealing with what I was going through and putting it onto paper as a cathartic experience for me. Right. Uh, then, as I shifted careers and into becoming an executive coach, I began to talk to and work with more and more. Uh, folks who are 35 to 55, kind of the midlife uh, time of our lives. And I realized that things that I was experiencing, a lot of other people were experiencing as well. And I thought if I bridging the two together was uh, a great, a great way to also give something back to uh, the community and to folks. Uh, so that's where it kind of where it came from, because I just saw so many people experiencing the same things. And and I wanted to do something that would help. Good for you. And I have to say, you and I are kindred spirits in many ways because we've both gone through a significant career at reinvention and we're both executive coaches. And I find it incredibly rewarding and gratifying to help other people navigate their career journeys. And it sounds like you feel the same. Yeah, that's it's interesting. I uh, had spent 21 years in uh, advertising marketing and realized that that career was coming to an end. And, and I thought, okay, well, what was I really good at in yeah. that role? And that was really mentoring and helping uh, people that worked on my team be better leaders, uh, be better people, and helping teams be more successful. So I thought, well, maybe I should just do more of what I really enjoy doing. So it's been, it's been great. It's fantastic to work with people and help them work through a period of time which is difficult and to help them do it quicker than maybe they would if they had to do it all on their own. Good for you. Good for you. So let's really dive into the book. And I want to start with the three things that you need to do to reset your internal GPS. Tell me more about that. Yeah, I think there's, uh, uh, there's this notion of, of just actually just feeling good about where you're at today, right? So it's, it's feeling... Um, making amends with whatever you need to uh, make amends with. So it's kind of accepting where you're at. Um, uh, it's also just living in the present uh, and then creating space. So it's also creating space for you to achieve what you wanted to achieve, which may mean uh, getting rid of uh, either behaviors or uh, maybe even some relationships that aren't exactly uh, good for you or, or doing, uh, doing you any uh good service, if you will. Yeah, I, I absolutely get that. Sometimes it's surrendering, right? And letting go of, of what's not working to make room for all new good things. Absolutely. That's for sure. So you talk so eloquently in the book why career gridlock tends to happen to more people during their midlife. Tell me more. Yeah. So I think we, um, I, I think we, we get to this point where we've added so much onto our lives, right? So we've taken on a lot of responsibilities. Uh, we've taken on a lot of obligations, uh, but we never take anything away. Mm -hmm. So we just keep, we keep adding to our lives. We keep adding to our lives. We keep adding to our lives, and we don't take anything away. And I think the weight of that becomes uh, too much to bear. 
So then we get stuck and we're overwhelmed and we don't know what to do. So part of what this is, is how do you begin to take some things away, realize that you can't just keep adding. At some point, you have to pare some things away uh, so that you can open yourself up, you can free, you can make some space so that you can continue to move through. You know, I, I love that. And and I just want to say, too, I, again, I so appreciate talking to a fellow coach. It's not a sign of weakness to take anything away, right? It's, it's oh. working smarter, not harder, yes. right? And I think so many people are stuck with that roadblock. Oh, my gosh, I can't do less. Yes, you can. And you can do better, right? You can do more extremely well with less. Yeah, I think we think we think we have to just we have to do it all and we have mm-hmm. to keep we have to do we have to keep adding more. And I think what's been interesting is when all of a sudden people begin to realize, well, what if, you know, how do you pair things away? So I had a uh, client who uh, was feeling a lot of financial pressures. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even before I began to work with her, they she was the primary breadwinner. They uh, downscaled their home because it was just too much. They didn't need such a big home. They right. didn't need everything that came with a big home. So they downscaled. They bought a smaller home in the same school district so their kids could continue to go to the same schools. But it relieved all this financial burden that was on the family. Uh, and it's made them uh, much closer because now they're kind of adjoined on what what they want to do financially but also where, what they want, the life they want to have as a family. Brilliant. Yeah, Less is more. <laughs> Less is more, for sure. <laughs> so why is setting your resetting your GPS, why shouldn't that be a solo mission, Peter? You know, so many people are fiercely independent and they want to do it themselves and prove to the world that they've accomplished everything solo. You and I are in disagreement. Tell me tell me why. Yeah, I, I think it's really, uh, and, and I will admit, I tend to be a little bit in that camp myself. Oh, uh, me too. Yeah, right. we know him when we see him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but what I've realized is you can achieve so much more if you allow other people in. You let other people, you enlist help. People want to help you. Uh, and so if you enlist some help and you make and you make it something that they can participate in, people are w- w- willing, ready, and able to help you out. So true. So true. And it's not a sign of weakness. In fact, very successful people have others whom they have reached out to along their journey. And that's a good thing. Yeah. In fact, I would just a, a, any articles that you read about successful leaders, they will all talk about how they have created a network of whether it's mentors, uh, advisors, uh, sounding boards uh, to help them uh, deal with problems because you can't, there's no way you can, you're, you're, you're able and you're fit to deal with every single type of problem that exists. Exactly. So tell me about the seven warning signs of career distress that you talk about in the book and how do I identify the ones that you're experiencing? Yeah. So I think this was one of the things that became, uh, began to unfold as I talked to more and more people is there were these certain threads and stressors that people were experiencing. So um, so I'll just kind of run through the seven very quickly. The one is wavering self-confidence. Uh, the second one is at sea. The third one is relinquished identity. Uh, fourth one is neglected. Fifth is idling. Sixth is no focus. And seventh is growing discontent. Uh, and I talk about each of these a little bit in the book. And, and the key thing here is just so that people can maybe um, identify the in, you know what they're experiencing. Uh, sometimes we don't know, we can't always do it on our own because we're we're in it. We're so in it we can't quite see it and tease it apart. So this is to help people say, ah, yes, that's me. I've I've been suffering from growing discontent. So for example, that was my situation that I had. Uh-huh. So I was in advertising for 21 years, as I mentioned, and I'd gotten to a place pretty successful and uh, more successful than I thought I could be. Uh, but it wasn't satisfying everything for me. And, and it wasn't until I kind of began to tease it all apart that I just realized there was this growing discontent and it, and it really wasn't serving me or my uh, my team anymore. And those are exactly the kinds of things, right? These seven warning signs that, a, that an executive coach can help you work through. Yes. Yes. Because we can't always see it. It's funny. And I'm sure you hear this all the time. People will say, how come I just couldn't figure this out on right. my own? Right. Especially... When you when it, it usually is pretty simple, 
And because we can't, you know, we, you need an objective. You need something, someone else who can, can help you um, kind of look at your truths, maybe through a different lens or shine a light on it slightly differently. And someone who is also not connected to you. So they don't right. have, right? So they don't have a, um, a vested stake in it. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. So I love the next concept because it's right up my alley. I, I like to call myself a, a reinvention specialist mm-hmm. because I myself have had my own very dramatic career reinvention. But you talk about it's not time for retirement. It's time for reinvention in the book. And you state very clearly that it's never too late to reinvent your career. Yeah. So, you know, I think a lot of people and I saw a lot of this. People just go into survival mode. Yeah. You know, they think, ah, oh, you know, 10 or 15 more years. You know, I'm just going to hang on. And that's unfortunate because those 10 or 15 years, I think, are when we're most productive uh, and when we have the most to give. Uh, we have experience. We have wisdom. We have knowledge. We're, we've really honed our ability to make decisions. Uh so it's almost you need to kind of flip it and say, no, no, this is when you have the most to give. This is when you need to really think about how you maybe redefine your role within an organization. And quite frankly, that's what I did. So I, I went back to my company and, and redefined my role with them. And so I moved out of what I was doing, which was account management. And I helped them create a coaching practice, which I now help run as an outside consultant. So, and I've worked with other people, even inside companies, to help them maybe shift and rethink about the role that they can play within an organization. See, I love that because so many people think career reinvention means an entire shift in career field. You know, I'm a lawyer and now I'm going to be X. And that can happen. Certainly we've seen that, right? That's something that that exists. But I love this concept of reinventing within your organization, right? Looking at your role and figuring out how can I play to my strengths differently in a new way. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, I think very few of us are equipped to just start something totally new. I mean, I think that there are few, but I don't, I think most of us probably are not equipped that way. But I think what we are equipped to do is to begin to make these shifts and changes. And it's, and it's interesting when people all of a sudden open that up and they open it up to their organization, the organization says, oh yeah, we need need this. this, (laughs) So everybody thinks, well, they haven't come to me yet, so they must not need it. And I'm like, no, 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 you need to go to them because they know what they don't know. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Come to me with a pitch. Absolutely. A pitch. <laughs> find, you know, find some champions, find some mentors. And the first answer that I got when I, when I kind of pitched the idea of a coaching program was no, we don't have budget for it, but go talk to, and that started. Yeah. My, it's not my, dead yet. Yeah, exactly. Not dead yet. <laughs> exactly. So you have, you have to kind of persevere through it. I love it. You know, one of the takeaways that I really appreciated in the book, too, was that you can always change your mind, right? So it's worth taking a risk. It's worth, you know, the risk of failure, because if it doesn't work, fine, pick yourself up, brush off and start again, right? Yeah, right. And and you'll continue to, to, uh, you know, tweak it as you're going along, right? Exactly. So uh, I, I have yet to kind of come across someone who has like completely failed in whatever they decided to do. Uh, it may have evolved into something slightly different, exactly. but I have yet someone who's just fallen flat on their face. Yeah. We learn from every step. There's yeah. no doubt. There's no doubt. So Peter, walk me and the listeners through the four steps to amplify your career and your life. And, and again, what I love, love, love about your book is that it's integrated. It's not just work. It's about life at large. Yeah, yeah for sure. So I think the first one is it's interrogating your life. So I think it's taking a step back. And looking at where you've been, uh, this is what I call the life arc, and kind of seeing where the, where the high points are, what you were doing, with whom, why it was so great, uh, and also some of the low points. And uh, so that we can, you, we can identify and build off of those high points. The second point uh, in part of that is doing uh, an assessment of where you are today. So kind of looking at your life across 10 different categories and and seeing, okay, where am I at on family? Where am I at on physical environment? Uh, spirituality and and then what maybe where do I want to dial some of those up uh, so that's uh, step number one. Second step is formulating your plan right so 
set, set your goals, uh, get a good sense of the vision for the life that you want to create, your values, uh, your purpose. Uh, third step is conquering old foes. Uh, and this is where we need to clear away anything that's getting in our way. So this could be uh, limiting beliefs. Uh, this could be maybe some relationships that aren't serving us well. Uh, and then the fourth area, fourth step is adopting the changes you desire. Uh, and so from this, what we want to do is, what are some action steps? And uh, I'm a big advocate of starting with the small ones. Start with things that get you going, and then you continue to build on them. Awesome. And again, you just articulated this beautiful structure for an, an executive coaching relationship, right? You can help a client navigate through these four factors so they can reach their personal goals. Yeah. And it's, yes, exactly. And, you know, and that's, uh, and then, uh, and this is what I also love about talking to a, another coach in a situation like this, because everyone is like, oh my God, that's like, that's what, that's the value that a coach can bring to, to working with somebody. And it's also the accountability, right? Someone that's going to hold your feet to the fire and give you that gentle or not so gentle nudge to say, okay, what was that baby step that you took today toward, you know, your particular goal? Yeah. It's, and it's, it's, you know, these are things that are hard to do on our own too. Yeah, you know, absolutely. We get, we get so overwhelmed with everything else that we can put the, this part aside. So having somebody else that you can work through it with can help you move it, move it along much quicker than if you're trying to do it on your own. Got it. So Peter, what's next for you? Got this great new book out. Coaching is going well. Are you public speaking as well? Are you out on the circuit talking uh -huh. about the book? I'm doing a little bit of I'm doing a little bit of speaking as Good well. Good for you, yeah. And uh, I'm actually uh, working on the second one. Very good. So, I, yeah. I get that. You, you're never done, right? You never finish done. one, and and what's next? Well, how exciting! Well, keep me posted, and we'll get you on the show to talk about that. Speaking of which, tell us how we can buy your book. Sure. Yeah. So the uh, the book is available on Amazon.com, uh, Barnes and Noble, uh, iBooks. Uh, you can also uh, check it a little bit out on my website, petercdiamond.com, which also has uh, an opportunity to get the workbook for free. Yeah. So even if you wanted to get started on the workbook, that's uh, it's a great companion piece to the book. Excellent. And you're active in the social media sphere. Should people be checking you out on what? Sure. Yeah. Twitter, so, LinkedIn? You've got a blog uh, as well. You want to talk about that? Sure. So the blog is The Amplify Guy. Uh, the... On Twitter, I'm at Peter C. Diamond, and uh, I also am a contributor for Entrepreneur.com. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Peter, what a joy to have you on. As I said, I devoured the book on a recent flight and loved it and have shared it with some of my clients because I think it's a great resource, and I believe that good coaches share great resources, so I thank you for that, and I wish you great success, and I hope that our paths cross again soon. Well, thank you very much. It was an absolute pleasure to be speaking with you today. Take good care. Thank you. And I want to thank our listeners for tuning into Your Working Life, where my goal is to help you design your career destiny so it doesn't happen by default. True career and life satisfaction is really possible, and it's time to embrace what you love doing so you can do more of it. I'm Caroline Dowd-Higgins. Take good care. <laughs>